next week. Thank you, God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us here to commemorate Youth Sunday. Thank you for all you've done for us and having us here to, as youths, as people who are the future and people who are looking to the seniors to learn from them and to receive wisdom and, and love and support. And I hope that this message will be you speaking through my mouth and blessing the rest of the congregation. Jesus name I pray. Okay, good morning. So uh, today, you can see the topic that we have for today is the youth in God's expectation. So like when I was given this message, uh, this topic, I looked at it and you can actually break it up when you look at it, the youth, who are the youth in this uh, congregation and think about it. Is it the people who are 15 to 35 years old, people who are young? But actually when I was thinking about it, I think in a church setting, in a environment where there's a, there's a reason why we are here, I think what we are looking for as youth, we are looking to grow spiritually. So the maturity that we are seeking is a spiritual maturity. So when we support youth, when we look at how we are going to support this group later, the food sale and all this. We are not supporting this group of people, we are supporting people who are walking to find Christ through Christ. And if there's anything we can support and give to the youth, it's about showing how we can walk through Christ. And it's always about Christ and imparting this wisdom. And this may not necessarily be in correlation to age. Sometimes we can. Uh, you know, we can even pull help our friends, same age, people who are older, younger. And I think that's the message of Christ, because in the end, it's about how Christ brings us through life. Okay, so, um, if you look at this topic, so, first thing, youth. Okay, and then the second one is God's expectation. So, when I was thinking about what God's expectation is, I mean, first of all, why would God have any expectations of me? What is God's expectation? You know, uh, why would God want me to fulfill His expectations? Because He's created me. He's created you guys to listen to me today. He's created setting. What could I do that could please Him by my expectations? So, um, the first thing that we have to look at is, uh, this is all driven by Christ and the Holy Spirit. Because there's nothing that I can do as a human being here that will please Him. It is not about Christ. It's not about the Holy Spirit. So, it, based on that, I've come up with three things that I feel that would be expected of me when Christ comes into my life. So, the first thing is flourish in Christ, being aware of sin, abiding in the Father. This seems like a, quite a simple thing that we hear a lot every day, you know, we sing about all these things, but actually, when you look at it, none of these things can be achieved by ourselves. And I will elaborate more. So, the first thing, flourish in Christ. What does it mean to flourish in Christ? So, um, when we look at it, you know, when we have prayer requests, you know, we, a lot of us, you today, some of us are doing exams, you know, some of us job interviews, you have uh, all these things that we pray for, you know, we means a lot to us, all these things that make a difference to where we're going to go next. And even in a church setting, sometimes we have... To compare ourselves with our peers and this and that. Sometimes when we're praying to Christ, what are we asking God to flourish us with? Are we asking us Him to enhance our lives or are we asking Him to fully come? That's the question. So I just want to bring want to bring you to this verse. So this is uh, in Daniel. So just look at it. So this is so I'll just read it. So the living may know that the most high is sovereign over all the kingdom on the earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. Okay, so this is God's attitude to how he treats the living, the people who follow him. You see, and then he sets over them the lowliest of people. So this really struck up to me this week. You see, how God's attitude is to people who follow him. He sets the lowliest people over them. The lowliest, I don't just mean the way that we think, but it's the way that God is bringing us into Him is by setting us low. And I think that is a very, very important thing because if you look at the other one that I have over here, this is in John. It says, uh, He must increase, but I must decrease. 
So as simple as it is, if you're going to flourish in Christ, it means that we, me as a person, I need to remove anything about myself if I really want Him to come into me. Because at the end, His Holy Spirit, His splendor cannot align with my splendor. Okay, so the next one, God expects you to stop. So what I mean by this is the awareness of sin. I bring you to this, uh, this verse. So this is in Corinthians. It talks about, this is about Paul. So um, Paul was having this thorn in his flesh. So if you know, he was given by a messenger of Satan a thorn in his flesh. And this is Paul, the person who was gladly a fool for Christ. You know, he... He did all these things for Christ. He wrote half the Bible and he's pleading with God three times that you might remove this thorn from my flesh. You know, God, I'll do better for you if you remove this. God, you know, this is really bringing me down. This is not of you and I can't remove it. So I don't know. I won't mention anything in particular, but every one of us here has that kind of thorn in us. That no matter what you do, no matter how much you pray, you know it is set there. To conflict with your walk with Christ. And this is a very real thing that we should be aware of. Like I said, the, when you have Christ in your heart, what He expects you to do is to be aware of it. So how do you solve this then? So the next verse I have, you can't on your own. So John, again, apart from me, you can do nothing. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, there's nothing you can do. And that Again, if God expects me to stop, God doesn't expect me to stop on my own. Because sometimes the level of devil that He sends to you is beyond what you can do. You can say, okay, I'm going to I'm going to deal with this. I've, I've meditated, I've prayed, I've uh, read all these books, I've, you know, I'm ready for this. But at some degree, God is going to allow these spirits to come and to test you beyond what you can do by yourself and the only way to do it is to stop and to be aware of the sin. So when we look at the gospel, uh, this is a, uh, often we don't fully understand the power of the message of God. But what I'm speaking here about how Christ is coming over us is the message of gospel. And over here, if you look at it, uh, when God said, when, when God, when Jesus was walking around and we read the stories in the gospel, and even in our Bible study, sometimes Uncle Sam really brings this message to Jesus never condemned particular sins. If you look at it, he never said, this is bad. Do not do this particular thing. He said, you are, your faith has made you whole and go and sin no more. His message was always stop and sin no more because you're giving up this life that you used to live and now he's giving you this new life. It's always about go and receive this new life. Okay, so it brings me to the third one. Huh? So, abiding in the Father. So, again, I just pause here. I say, I've been saying a lot of things that, you know, yeah, we, we've, we've heard all this before, you know, we've, uh, we sing about it. Today, we sang so many things that are aligned with all these things, but to really receive this, to abide with the Father, how do you do this? You know, how do you do abide with the Father? So, there's this verse that I really, really like that a friend of mine shared a year ago with me and it really changed the way I saw so much in my life. In fact, everything. It helped me to understand what, what it helped me to contextualize so many things in my life. So, I'll just go through it with you. Okay, so uh, it says, come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we'll go to such and such a city. We'll spend a year there. We'll buy, sell, make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It, it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. And this is the part that, if there's any takeaway that I would say from this message, this line there, you see. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and then we'll do this or that. There's a sequence to how God's telling us to live this will of His. You know, God, we'll do your will, God will do this, we'll do that. But here you can't do it yourself. So, if you look at it, there's a sequence. If God wills, then we will live, and then we will do it. He's not asking you to go and do it yourself. He's not asking you to go and, and do what I expect. Do it, do it, do it, and then I will give you the reward later. He's telling you, if I will for it, 
and you will live and then you will do you do not even need to worry about what you would plan for because if he didn't will for it there's no way he's going to bless it so now the point I want to say is if you look so okay so now we know okay so now if I know the will of God and I will live how do I do that and we actually already have this because that's the message of the gospel he gave us Jesus and he gave us Jesus who promised abundant life you know he, Jesus said I come and I come to give you life and abundantly that's, that is what there, what God wants us to actually do. He wants us to live. To, there's only one way we will do, and that is through Christ. And so, show you again the first slide. Okay, so flourish in Christ, awareness of sin, abide in the Father. So, like what I said, living, living is not you living the wonderful, the rejoicing life that you think is what God wants you to do. It's about His will and. If Christ is not in it, if the message of the gospel is not in it, if your splendor is in it, it is not what He wills. Because God's will is never for your splendor. And I just want to show you, so if there's any way to move on from this, like I said, it's just a simple answer, and it's Jesus Christ. Okay, so at the end of this message, I just want to say, um, if there's any takeaway that you can take from today, the will of God is for you to live. He's given you Jesus Christ, who has promised you life. When you partake of His flesh and blood, you are partaking of Him. His own, not you, not you asking Him to enhance my life, enhance all these wonderful things that I, I, I call righteous. No, He's asking you to receive Him and to remove everything of yourself and to do, last things to do. And that is God's expectation for me. And so... Uh, yeah. So, I'll just close up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us this time for us to share this message, for me to say what you want me to say and to bless the time that we have in this church. I pray that the rest of the day will be blessed and we can listen to you and have our hearts open to hearing what you have to say and to opening our hearts to Christ and Jesus, which is the reason why we have come here today, to receive life from you. All this I ask in your precious name. Amen.